presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week, Jungle Jim and Hawkins said goodbye to Myra Trent, the medical missionary, and started off for Upper Burma on the trail of Ronald Hawkins. They kept the departure secret by leaving in the middle of the night. Once outside of Mandalay, Jim obtained elephants and boys to make up the safari. Two days after Jim's departure, Myra Trent was startled when Bhutan appeared at her side. When he mentioned that Jungle Jim had left the city, her face involuntarily showed that his guess was correct, and Bhutan set off to follow Jim. Myra phoned her information to Colonel R.D.H. Scott of the British Intelligence, and he sent Shanghai Lil to shadow the mysterious Hindu, Bhutan. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. Out on the jungle trail, Jungle Jim and Peter Hawkins are encamped for the night. The two men are sitting before their tent, enjoying the brilliant splendor of a full moon. Ah, oh, he was right, Jim. About what, Peter? As how everything in the jungles was so still and so quiet he could hear it. Oh. Do you remember? As how I says hearing nothing would be a novelty. Yes, I do, Peter. Hmm. This here blinking moon gets me thinking. That's bad for an head like mine. What does it make you think about? London? No. Sets me to thinking... There's how my run is up ahead there somewhere, looking at the dear same moon. If he can know it's a moon. No, oh, I'm sure he does, Peter. Ah, thank you, Governor. You're only saying that to make me feel good. I know it's more than likely he can't tell whether it's day or night, and he ain't even interested. He was like that the last time I saw him. Oh, but that was ten years ago. Yeah. He's been in hospital since. Perhaps he's much better. Miss Trent didn't say he was, Jim. She says he's still suffering from shell shock. Now, you were to yourself. Yes, I know she said that. But she didn't say he was as bad as you picture him to be. I know. But she was skirting around the truth of the matter, too. Oh, I think you're painting the picture darker than it really is, my friend. Maybe. But I can't help wondering where he is, how he is, and if we'll ever find him. Oh, come on. Cheer up, old man. Of course we're going to find him. Uh, You don't suppose I'd have come all the way down here if I weren't sure our search would be successful? Oh, I know you means to find him if it's humanly possible, Governor. But after looking over this here countryside, it strikes me it's going to be like looking for a blooming needle in an haystack. Not quite as bad as that, Peter. You see, we found out that your Ronnie is somewhere in the northern part of Upper Burma. Well, that eliminates a lot of wasted energy running around the jungles of Lower Burma, doesn't it? Yeah. So as we progress northward, we'll keep asking for news of an Englishman of your son's description. Now... Sooner or later, we're bound to pick up his trail. That's only logical. Yes, Jim. But suppose Ronnie keeps moving ahead of us. Mm. You would have to bring that up. Nah. You see? It ain't going to be so easy as you're trying to make out, Governor. Yes, it is, Peter. You've brought up the only real difficulty we'll run into, as far as I can see. And I'm hoping that won't happen. All I ask is that your Ronnie stay in one place until we get there. That's what I'm praying for, too, Governor. Well, you keep right on praying, Peter, and... Say... Hey, do you smell smoke? No. Not from here, I can't. Funny, I thought I caught a whiff of burning cloth. <laughs> Maybe it's one of them black boys got his shirt tail mixed up with the cook's fire. <laughs> well, if he did, it's going to be his hard luck. Yeah. He won't get another one until the trip's over. Uh. Now, as I was saying, Peter, you keep right on praying that Ronnie doesn't wander away from where he is this minute. I will. I ain't stopped since he disappeared ten years ago. I ain't going to. The reports of the past year haven't varied much. No. That's what gives me hope of our finding, Ronnie. He still stares within the same area. Oh, there's Colo down there. I wonder what's got him so excited. Yes, Colo? What's the matter? Come, quick. Get your gun ready, Peter. No telling what Colo may have run into. Right with you, Tim. What is it, Colo? What's the matter? Oh, Tim, smoke, fire. Fire? I told you I thought I smelled smoke, Peter. Where's the fire, Colo? Uh, tent with supplies, one, Jim. Look, look. Look, the whole back of the tent is blazing. Come, Come on, on, kid. Look at the supplies. Get the pans of water, quick. Oh, we lose everything. Come on, Peter. Oh, say. Oh. How in the world did that blooming tent catch on fire? No water, Colo. Look, Jim. Huh? It's nowhere near the cook's fire. And especially the back of it. Throw some water up there, Colo. Right. That's it. Blessed if I know, Peter. Oh, no. Come on. 
Throw it. I see. Oh, well, that corner's still blazing. Throw some water on it, somebody. Peter, I'm going in to see how much damage has been done. Now, look out, Kim. One of them black devils may be waiting to take a chance pot shot at us. Oh, I hardly think so. He's done all the damage he's wanted to have succeeded in ruining our supplies. Come on, Peter. Right with you, Governor. You call him, lad. You take my pail and twist some more water on that place. Well, I go inside with the governor and have a look. Go mm. do. <coughs> what do you... What do you find here? Well, this, this smoke makes it hard no. to tell what's been burnt and what hasn't, Peter. <coughs> Let's get some of the stuff out in the open air. Right on, Jim. Here we go. Oh. Boy, it's a darn good thing we didn't have an ammunition supply in here. Yeah. You jolly well said it right, Jim. <coughs> There'd be no need us moving this stuff out now. It had been spread all over the clearing. Yep. There. Well, these canned goods are okay. Uh, how's that stuff you got, Peter? All right, as far as I can see, it's top all, I might say. No, it just smoked up a bit. Yeah. Well, that's good. These things were nearest the blaze. So I guess the rest of it hasn't been damaged. We can check up on it tomorrow. Here, Jim. What do you suppose somebody would want to set fire to our tent for? Well, for the same reason they sent us the bomb back in Mandalay. Our unseen enemy is giving us another warning. Well, I wish he'd make himself known some other way. So do I. And I wonder where our unseen enemy will strike next. Meanwhile, back in Mandalay, a taxi drives onto the flying field, its shades closely drawn, and its lights dimmed. There is my plane. Bring the luggage. I shall see that everything is in order. Yes, for time. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, good. The plane is ready? Yes, for time. Everything is ready. Very well. We shall take off at once. Now, who is this? Mr. Bouton, Mr. Bouton. Oh, it's the white girl. Well, what is it, Mme. Sartorant? I followed you. I had to see you. Well? I want to talk to you. My plane is ready to leave. I must urge Mme. Sartre to be brief. I've been thinking things over. You warned me not to get mixed up with jungles and Bradley, and I laughed at you. Mme. Sartre did not believe me. That is true. Well, certain things have happened to convince me that you are right in your estimation of him. So? I wanted to see you to find out just what you know about Bradley. Then I'll tell you something. Very well, Mme. Sartre. Jungle Jim Bradley concerns himself too much with what does not concern him. He has made a reputation for himself for starting investigations where it would be best not to investigate. And how does his search for the missing Englishman come under that heading? That is something that Mem Saab does not need to know. You're afraid you'll find something else beside the Englishman? Hmm, I do not understand. If Mem Saab will explain herself. Well, I, I do hope you overtake Jungle Jim Bradley, Mr. Bhutan. I certainly do. Ah, Mem Saab has changed your opinion, eh? Yes. You're right about Mr. Bradley. He does concern himself where he isn't wanted. I didn't ask him to come into my life, but he did, with his lies and his cheating. Lies? Cheating? Yes. I've just found out that he didn't go to Upper Burma at all. What? Are you sure, Mem Saab? I wish I weren't. He said he was going there and would send to me later. Oh, the woman's scorn. No one can do that to me, Lyra Trench. I want you to take me with you, Mr. Bhutan. I'll show you where to find Jungle Jim Bradley. I regret exceedingly that it is impossible to do as Mem Saab requests. The jungles of India are no place for a woman, least of all a white woman. But I know where Jim Bradley is. You need me to show you the way. The luggage is in the plane, old master. Very well, you may go. You must take me with you, Mr. Bhutan. You must not go without me. I tell you, it is impossible to take you, Mem Saeb. Now, tell me where Jungle Jim Bradley has gone, and I'll start after him. I won't tell you unless you will take me with you. You are wasting precious time, Mem Saeb. See, my plane is all ready for flight. My luggage is placed on board. The pilot waits only for me to start. You heard what I said. Either you take me, or I don't tell you where Jim Bradley is. Mem Saeb... Is this a trick to keep me from going? I do not believe you know where he is. You are trying to delay me. Why? Uh, what makes you think I don't know? I must confess I believe my other informant more. And also your reaction of the other day when you showed in your face that I discovered where Bradley has gone. <laughs> he is in Upper Burma. 
And I am going at once. All right. I've done my best to delay you with words, and I've failed. Yes, Mem Saeb, you have failed. Not yet, Mr. Bhutan. Stand where you are. Put down that gun, you little fool. Put it down, I say. You will do as I say. Oh, very well, Mem Saeb. I will. (laughs) (laughs) Hurry, Gungadora. Get us on our way to Abba Burma. Although Myra Trent didn't know it, there was someone else at the flying field who was watching every move. It was Shanghai Lil in her disguise as an Indian woman. Next morning, she reports to her superior, Colonel R.D.H. Scott. Well, well, Mr. Bell, uh, what have you to report? I shadowed this Bhutan as you ordered, Colonel Scott. He spent the evening with friends in a little dive on the other side of town. Yes, uh, proceed, please. They sat in a corner facing the door. It was impossible to get close enough to actually hear what they were saying. But they had their heads together as though they were plotting. Uh, do you think uh, you could identify the others? I made friends with a waiter, and a liberal tip supplied me with the names of the distinguished guests. Here you are. Oh, splendid, splendid. Oh, you're very clever, Mr. Brill. <laughs> we shall round up these men for questions. I thought you would, so this morning I found out where each of them lives. You will notice the address is after each name. Oh, you astound me, Mr. Brill. Such thoroughness. Always glad to oblige, Colonel. You'll find that out. When you assign Lily DeVril to a job, she does it. Mm, So it would seem. Uh, Continue with your report. After this conference, Bhutan was sent to his hotel. I found the location of his room, and I watched him finish his packing. Well, and then? He went out to a waiting taxi, loaded up his baggage, and he drove off. Well, of course you followed. Yes, I hailed another cab, and we trailed Bhutan to the flying field. Oh, I say. Before I could leave my cab at a safe distance and stalk my suspect, he dashed for a waiting plane. Yes, yes, go on. As he neared it. A woman drove onto the flying field and hailed him. She ran up to him, and they had some kind of argument. Oh, could you hear what they said? No. Well, then how do you know it was an argument? Because Bhutan turned as if to get into the plane. The woman followed him, and she drew a gun. Oh, I say, what happened then? Bhutan struck her to the ground. Then he ran to the plane, and they took off. Took off? Which way? He flew northwest. Oh, that's the luck. Too bad you couldn't have learned their objective. Oh, you underestimate me, Colonel Scott. Well, Why? You just said you didn't get close enough to Bhutan. That's to... right enough. I didn't get near Bhutan. But sometimes there's more than one way of skinning a rabbit. No, oh, what do you mean? I returned to Bhutan's car before it left the field and made eyes at the chauffeur. Oh, well, I should have known. And you found out that Bhutan flew to Upper Burma, near Mogan. Oh, excellent, excellent. And I proved myself capable of further assignments, Colonel? You certainly have. Mr. Brill. Can you leave for Upper Burma at once? Colonel Scott, that's just what I've been waiting to hear. The adventures you have just heard dramatized will appear in full-color action pictures in the Comic Weekly. The big Comic Weekly distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the world's greatest supplement of humor and adventure, you will find all the famous characters who live in the world of color pictures. There's Skippy, Jiggs and Maggie... Barney Google, Toots and Casper, Flash Gordon, and many, many others. See all these famous characters in your copy of next Sunday's Comic Weekly. And don't forget our date next week, same time, same station, for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim.